Hi guys and welcome to Drum Dog. Today we are going to be talking about something overlooked by a lot of drummers and that is bass drum pedal settings. Now we're all too familiar taking time picking the sticks we use, but why is it that not that many people take the same amount of time to check out the settings on their pedal? Because it has as much of an influence on our overall kit playing. So in this video today we are going to go over the different adjustments you can make on a pedal, the effects they're going to have, and how to actually make those adjustments. Let's get into it. So before we get into the actual adjustments on the pedal, it's really important that we understand the effects this is going to have and what that's going to mean to our foot. Now there are three main factors here that these adjustments are going to change, and those are velocity, resistance, and return. So velocity. Now all velocity means is it's going to affect how hard we can actually hit the bass drum. A pedal set up for high velocity playing is going to let us really hit super hard, whereas a pedal set up for a low velocity is going to be a little bit more sensitive and we're not going to be able to get that same amount of force into the drum head. For resistance, all that is going to be is the amount of resistance we feel against our foot as we press the pedal down. And finally, for return, that is going to be the speed in which the beater returns back to us after a note. I do want to draw a really clear line here between return and rebound, because you will get a limited amount of rebound off of a bass drum head, especially if it's a smaller drum and if it's tuned a little bit higher, but that's not what we're talking about here. Return isn't the rebound off of the head, it's purely the rebound from the spring on the pedal and the settings returning that beater back, completely independent for rebound from the drum. So keep those three points in mind as we move forwards because every adjustment we make on the pedal is going to affect all three of those things. Some adjustments will affect one more than the other two, but all of them will still change with every adjustment we make. Okay, so on to the adjustments themselves. And now let's kick off with the most obvious one that everyone goes to first of all, and that is spring tension. Now almost all bass drum pedals rely on a spring down the side here to bring that beater and football back to the original position. Now we can adjust the tension of that spring with this little setup down here. On most pedals we're going to have a locking nut on the top that we're going to undo to be able to adjust the tension. Then I'm going to push that down and then using this bottom nut here I'm going to turn it up the spindle if I want to increase the tension or down the spindle to decrease the tension. Now the higher the spring tension, the more resistance we're going to feel and the quicker the pedal is going to return to us. It will affect the velocity we can get through that resistance in the pedal, meaning we can push down harder, but that's not going to be affected as largely as the other two. Now the higher this spring tension is, the more resistance we'll feel playing the bass drum, but the quicker the return's going to be. On the other hand, the lower the tension, we're going to feel less resistance, which is often useful for playing a little bit lighter, but we are going to have that trade-off with a slower return. Now our second adjustment here is going to be beta and footboard angle. Now usually found on this little cam lobe here, there's a screw that we can undo to then reset the resting position of the beater and the footboard. Now the further away from the bass drum head we have this beater set, we're going to experience a much greater resistance in playing that note, but the velocity and the return is going to be much greater now we're stretching that spring so much further. On the opposite other hand, the closer to the drum head we're going to have that set, we're going to experience a much lighter pedal feel, but that return is going to be so much slower, now we're stretching that spring a lot less. Now this is the one pedal adjustment above all others that will make the biggest difference to velocity. And that brings us on to our third point of adjustment on the pedal, and that is beta height. Now this is a setting that we're going to change depending on the size of the bass drum we're playing, especially if you're playing a smaller bass drum without a riser, you're going to want to lower that a little bit, otherwise you're going to be hitting super close to the hoop. But this is a setting that will change how the beta feels as we change the size of the swinging radius of the beta compared to the centre spindle here. Now the effects of beta height adjustment can be a little bit confusing. 
As we bring the beta down closer towards the pedal, we're gonna get less velocity, but we're actually gonna experience increased resistance as that swinging weight is now closer to this spindle. On the opposite end, as we bring that beta further out, we're gonna get way more velocity, but we're gonna get less resistance now that that swinging weight has more of a mechanical advantage. The pedal feel aspect of beta heights often overlooked, so don't forget to experiment that one as you can get some really satisfying results. Now last but not least, our final adjustment is beta weight itself. Now while bass drum beaters do come in all sorts of different sizes, shapes and weights, there are ways to change this besides changing the entire beater itself. Now most pedals do come with some kind of little collar often used for a memory lock down here, but we can use that as a variable weight by sliding it up and down the beta shaft. Now as we have this all the way up the top, we are going to increase the weight of our beta by quite a lot, therefore increasing the velocity of our stroke. Whereas the closer it is to the bottom, the less velocity we're going to see from that stroke. Now some manufacturers have thought further than this. For example, on the Mapex Armoury pedals, we've actually got an interchangeable weight in the head of the beta. I think these come stock with a 10 and 20 gram weight. Now simply put, that is it. Those four adjustments are the biggest things you can change on your pedal to change those main three feel factors. Experiment with balances of the different points because like I said at the beginning, every single adjustment will affect all three of those feel characteristics. So it's finding the balance of the different features that suits the feel and playing style you're looking for. Now there are a few further points of different pedals that will affect it, not quite as dramatically, that are worth mentioning. Now one of those is the cam shape. Most manufacturers do offer a different shape of this cam here, which will affect the velocity of our stroke without changing the feel dramatically. The main two shapes here are a completely round profile, which the beat is gonna move in exactly the same rate as the pedal and give a really balanced response, and cams with a slight flat spot like we see here. This cam starts round and then flattens off the closer to the drum the beater gets. Now that shape is gonna give you a slightly more aggressive stroke towards the end, therefore increasing your velocity without changing that beater feel too much. As a quick note on that subject, if you're looking to buy a pedal and you're not sure what cam profile you want to go for, both the DW9000s and Pearl Eliminators have a changeable cam profile, which is super cool. Now as a quick final note here, I wanna take a second to address setting up a double pedal to get both pedals to feel exactly the same. Now to achieve this, you're gonna to wanna to copy over all of the settings from the main pedal to the slave pedal to be exactly the same except the spring tension, which personally I find having a slightly lower spring tension helps achieve the same feel because of the transmission loss through that drive shaft. Now I really hope this video has helped demystify some of the pedal settings for you and has maybe inspired you to take a few minutes to play around with those settings and find something that can help you play your bass drum just that little bit better. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you for the next one.